a headline while we were on vacation was that a head coach somewhere went and took an offensive coordinator position at another school in the same conference. Huge headline. Massive. What the hell's going on? Especially because the coach that did it is one that is very successful, very well known. And on our particular program, a man who is very cerebral. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, offense coordinator for the Ohio State Buckeyes. A man who was mentioned in Jason Kelsey's retirement speech mm -hmm. for changing football in the NFL forever, Chip Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Coach! How you doing, Coach? What's up, Pat? How are you? I'm going to be honest. I was in Hawaii, okay? I think I had, uh, I think it was like two to three espresso martinis, okay? I had uh, a couple of these little gummy things that <laughs> just lighten moods. Okay, right. I had a few of those. Yeah. I was looking out at the ocean. My daughter was there. Wife was there. We were having a good time. Had a phone. I pick up the phone. Chip Kelly is now offense coordinator at Ohio State. Thought I was getting got, okay? I think that's how a lot of people felt. Yesterday, whenever you did your press conference, it was like the first time we really got to hear from you. I think you explained it in a manner that I assume people understand, but it's like you just wanted to get back to coaching ball instead of everything else. Is that the right read, or what do you think really was the reasoning to, to this particular move that made massive headlines everywhere in football? Not just college ball, but like football everywhere, because NFL obviously respects you as well. No, and I mean, the, I say it all the time, but the best part of football is football. And as the game has changed at the collegiate level, and we talked about that, um, I think the head coaching role has turned a lot more into being a CEO than a coach. Um, and I understand that. Um, and that comes with the territory. But I, I, I was at a point in time where I could make a decision on what did I want to do. Like, I, I just, I really enjoy coaching. I really enjoy being with the players, uh, I really enjoyed the relationships you have when you're in a meeting room. Um, I had not been in a meeting room since 2008. You know, I became a head coach in 2009. As the head coach, you visit the meeting rooms. You're in there. But as you know, AJ, you're, the head coach isn't in the linebacker meeting. You know, he may poke his head in there and see how everybody's doing. But um, I got a chance to coach the quarterbacks in our bowl game because our quarterback coach is a great football coach left to be the offensive coordinator at Oregon State. So I coached the quarterbacks, and I was in a meeting room daily for two weeks and getting, leading up to our bowl game against Boise State and f almost forgot about how much fun that part of it is. You know, and um, as I thought about it, you know, when I was at a point where I could say, here's an opportunity to go be a coach again, not a CEO. So um, it would have taken a real special place to get me to leave UCLA because – I love the players there. I love the coaching staff we have there. We had a great situation. Um, but the opportunity to come here and just coach football and not have to do the things that a head coach is asked to do now in college football appealed to me. Hey, congratulations on chasing fulfillment yeah. you know, and happiness. Yeah. Not a lot of people do that, man, especially in your profession. You know that. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, I know you've only been uh, on campus not too long, but you guys have had uh, at least a couple spring practices already. What's it been like getting out there and – you know, exploring your new role and obviously the whole new team trying to learn everybody's name and figure out where everything is. Where's the bathroom? Where's my meeting room? Like, how's that whole situation been? Where's the plunger? Well, as <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know, Chip. Especially that Ohio food. As, as you know, AJ, you can get lost in this building. So trying to navigate Wait. that has been interesting for me. I've, I've found myself walking through the middle of the weight room three or four times trying to find my office. But um, it's been awesome. You know, I think the culture that Ryan has here and, and the rest of the coaching staff and Mickey Mariotti in the, in the weight room has been awesome. You know, the players here have been fantastic. You know, they love football. You know, that's, that's the one thing I can tell you from, from being here for the short amount of time that I've been here. Is these players love football. This coaching staff loves football. Um, and you know what it's like being in Ohio. It, it's a, football is the sport in this state, and it's, it's awesome to be a part of something like that. So. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I've been here for three weeks. We've had two training sessions. We were on the field this morning. Uh, we were on the field Tuesday morning. So um, we've gotten two in so far, and it's, it's been awesome. It's feel good putting together plans and day, like for the actual practices and scripts and everything like that. I assume you're – Yeah, yeah that part. I, we were just watching practice tape when you guys called. So I just – you know, it, I've been able to do football like eight, nine hours a day. So the fact that you can – you can do that. And and I've seen Ryan get pulled out of the meeting and I gotta go to this, I gotta go to that. And it was like, All right, I'm good. We get we'll get this. We'll be we'll, we got the film, we got the X and O part. So Hey, hey uh, Ryan, good luck out there. Go get us an extra ten million, pal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go go get it. Yeah, yeah, good luck. I'm gonna uh... I'm going to go ahead and drop a couple plays here and uh, do football. And we're apologizing right now 
for taking you out of that to make you go back to the bullshit that you had to do as a head coach, which is interviews. But no. we, yeah, okay, good, good, good. We appreciate See, my, my, my goal is, Pat, is that I want to be as happy in my job as you are in your job. My man. Well, I can but, help. I can send you stuff. You know? yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay, okay, Chip. All right, you got it. No, I enjoy what I do, man. I'm very lucky to do what I do. And I know. The fact that you chase that, the fact that you chase that is cool because I assume – and this is just me being a doofus that talks about sports that has gone through my own self journey. I think you're probably going to perform the best you've ever performed too. Like if you, you know what I mean? Like I think that's probably going to be the case. And they always say like, are you happy because you win or do you win because you're happy? I think it's the latter. And like, obviously it's not easy to find a sense of happiness or fulfillment and everything like that for people. There's a lot of hard, hard things that happen during life. But when you find something you enjoy, normally your best performances come too because you're preparing a little bit more. You're enjoying the process a little bit more. The things that other people might think like suck, you're like, oh, it's cool I get to do this. It's like that's what it feels like for you after 16 years away from doing what mm -hmm. you basically got all of your jobs in your entire life set up from doing. Like that's a cool thing. I bet you're gonna, I bet you're gonna kill it, Chip. Not that you would ever not, but I bet you're gonna kill it here. That's the hope. I mean, and, and we talk about it all the time. If if you love the process, the process will love you back. So the fact that you understand what your role is, how you fit in, um, and just embrace that, you know, and it's. It's it's liberating in a way where you're like, hey, I just this is what I have to do, and and you know the parameters. And, and the one thing about being here is there's so many other good people in place that you don't have to do more than just your role. You know, I got to coach quarterbacks and and work with the offense. But you know, when you look over in practice and there's Larry Johnson and there's James Laronitis and there's Jimmy Knowles and there's Tim Walton, you know, you look at those coaches on the defensive side, you're like, wow. And then you get a chance to work with Brian Hartline every day and. And, and Justin Fry and Tony Alford and Keenan Bailey, it's, you know, everybody has a role and, and it's going back to being a good team. I think when everybody on the, on a team understands what their role is, you don't have to do more than your role. As, as Coach Belichick says, just do your job. Yeah, uh, I'm excited just to do my job and I, I don't need to do anything else. I don't need to do the other things that a head coach wants to do. Uh, I, I just get to coach quarterbacks and be with them every day. And, and this group of quarterbacks we have here is awesome. Hell you know, the yeah. fact that I I get to be in a meeting room with those guys every day. It's pretty cool. Hell yeah. I love hearing that, Chip. Good yeah. for you, man. Congratulations. Now, you just mentioned a great coaching staff. That was put together by one man that I think we learned you've known very well. Tone's got a question for you, Coach. Yeah, Coach, I, I know you've known uh, Coach Day for a really long time, so I, I know this adds an extra wrinkle into this, but I know uh, Coach Day has, I think, been a part of or calling the play since 2017. Then, obviously, you mentioned Coach Hartline, who was the offensive coordinator last year there. And then now I think you and him are, are listed as co-OCs and, and obviously Ryan being an offensive coach. Have you guys talked about now hard as a conversation been about play calling and who's going to do the play calling with the game plan? Because I know you as a head coach who, who did play calling in the past, like how, how was that process with all with you three together? Yeah, simple. I said it the other day. I'm call, I'll call all the good plays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and Ryan will bear the brunt of all the bad plays. <laughs> hey, that's a head coaching job. You signed. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's what you have to do as a head coach, right, Pat? Amen. All right, Chip, get back to the film study. We can't thank you enough for taking time, brother. All right, guys, appreciate it. AJ, we got to get you over soon. Yeah, I'm gonna come watch practice. I'm gonna bring some of my kids over there, coach. Yeah, I'd uh, love love to see you. We had Joey Galloway here today, and Ooh. Bobby Carpenter's been around. Bobby I thought Jim every was day. Saying, there's yeah. a bunch every of guys. Day. Bobby Carpenter. John, Coop John Cooper's been here every day. It's been awesome. Oh, there, nice. There's such a there's such a OSU family. I mean, you can't. It, it's exciting to see all these players and how much they care, and, and the fact and how much they're around this building. You you understand how special this place is. Yeah, and how much Ohio State takes care of the alumni too. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. I don't know if you know this. You're going to get to see this. I think over the next yeah. year or two. You said you've seen Bobby Carpenter there. Yeah, you're going to yeah. be I'm seeing a lot of. Him. You're going to be having meetings it. with Bobby Carpenter. He he's in, <laughs> he's running sprints with the boys in the winter workouts. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Could you imagine that? At 40? At 40, this oh, yeah. guy's running sprints with college kids. What a psycho. That's Ohio, by the way. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. that's Ohio, if I've ever heard it. <laughs> Have AJ tell you about what Schlegel does every morning, too, so we'll see that whole deal. Oh, jeez. What? It's Schlegel awesome. On staff again. It's ladies awesome. And, ladies and gentlemen, the offense coordinator of the Ohio State Buckeyes. Hey, quarter. who's, court, who's starting quarterback? Who do you want? Bobby Carpenter. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Chip Kelly. Yeah, coach. Thank you, Coach. Um, Seems happy, man. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's for now. Very happy. That's such a real thing that not a lot of people will make that jump because it's a lot less coin. 
you know, yeah. when he got a coordinator from head coach job. But, like, Chip Kelly, been around a long time. I assume his, this is just like Vaughn Miller taking the mm -hmm. yeah. less than whatever it is. It's like, I've made money, okay? I'm in a good spot. I'm a football guy mm -hmm. from humble beginnings. I would just like to maybe enjoy football mm -hmm. a little yeah. bit more. That's a, that's a cool thing to Especially make you that. get older. Because coaches never do that. No. You see how miserable nope. these coaches You're are. Right. Mac Brown has told us, like, uh, when he was at Texas, we asked him, and he said the pressure of being the coach at Texas for that long is when you won, it was a relief, and when you lost, it was devastating. So there was no happiness ever. You didn't hear a single, like, happy time in there. Oh. So you're doing all this work to not even achieve a happy. Like, that is tough, but you just got to do it because you're a head coach. Mm -hmm. You're not going back anywhere else. So Chip Kelly being like, I'm done with this shit. Like, I love that. Yes. I really do. And now, granted... He's going to have to deal with some stuff from those Ohio folks if that offense is not great, you know. Yeah. You yeah know, but it he all knows. starts. He knows. Got to win. Got to win. That's all that matters. <laughs> Got to win. Especially this year. <laughs> There's one guy ahead of him who's going to get it a lot worse, first and foremost. Who's mm -hmm. that? Ryan Day. I mean, if they don't. I, yeah, he's number one on that public enemy list. But, yeah. you know, if their offense sputters early or something, oh, we hired Chip Kelly. Like, That's still Ryan Day, though, man. too. It's going to be fun.